Chris Rufo offered $5,000 to prove that Haitian migrants are eating geese. And somebody sent in, a, sent in a video, probably collected the money, and it's a video of somebody, like, cooking a fucking duck on a grill. I mean, look, it's just their lies. And now there's bomb threats at schools and hospitals in Springfield because of the Nazi propaganda being spread by Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. And Bill Maher looks at all this and he goes, you know what? Bill Maher on his show, Real Time Bill Maher, made a prediction about the 2024 presidential election. He says it's over. Kyle Kalinske on his show, Secular Talk, broke all of this down. We're going to take a look at a clip from Real Time with Bill Maher, as well as clips from Kyle Kalinske's show. I'll share my thoughts from time to time. This is a good one. Let's get into it. So Bill Maher has officially pounded the gavel with his take on the 2024 election. He's already making a conclusive prediction on what he thinks is going to happen. Um, let me play it for you and then we'll react. Here we go. I'm going to make this a very momentous night with a prediction because I... Well, <laughs> and I think I have the credibility for this prediction because I have been called a Trump alarmist for a very long time. They were wrong. I was right. He wasn't going to leave power. Whenever. Okay. Uh, but ever since then, uh, and since the Hollywood access tape where he said, I'm going to grab him by the pussy and he survived that... <laughs> Every time he's been done crazy shit and gotten his stuff in trouble, I said, no, no, it's not over. I've said that. I've argued with people. Brett Stevens, my good friend, he's on the show next week. He said at one point a few years ago, the Trump thing, I said, no, no, no. Tonight I'm saying, I think it's over. I just want to bring up an analogy to one person. Even before we were around, there was a guy named Joe McCarthy in the early 50s, and he had a hold on America. And it blew out in about two years, right? Two, three years. He was the biggest thing, and then it was just, and I feel like, Eating the dogs, we're at this point. I think I feel like we're at the Captain Quig with the strawberries. We're at Denzel at the end of training day. Wow. 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 Now, that's an interesting thing to say, particularly because um, Nate Silver, who has been probably the most accurate of all the various uh, polling outlets, um, he still has it basically like a 50-50 race. If anything, Trump might even still be up a little bit. I haven't checked the numbers in a week or so, but... To him, he's saying, look, it's like roughly roughly a coin flip, right? Um, but he's he's pounding the gavel. He's saying it's over. He's saying Trump is not winning this election. So what's my take on it? I, I'm in the place now where I think Kamala is a favorite. I think she's a favorite. And uh, if, you have, if you guys didn't watch the previous segment, there's a number of reasons to believe that. These are the polls that just came out the other week. Kamala is now plus five in morning console plus five in Ipsos Reuters, plus four uh, in YouGov, plus three in Ledger, which is a right-wing uh, polling outlet, plus three in SoCal. Um, these are the new polls that came out post-debate. And, I mean, the polls are on Kamala's side right now, but also to Mars' point, it's the, tra it's the trajectory is the thing that it's hard to discount, right? I just went through these numbers, too. She's beating Trump now with she's going to represent the middle class better and small businesses and union members and blue collar workers. The idea of him as like a populist, an anti-establishment guy fighting the system, that mirage has collapsed. It's not there anymore. People see him for what he is. He governed for four years. We know he didn't look out for working people. He outsourced 200,000 jobs. He doesn't have the same sort of fake populism attached to him. Um, he just feels extreme, right? He just feels extreme. By the way, Kamala, there were... Uh, Trump was beating Biden by 18 points in Iowa. Kamala is now four points down in Iowa, in Iowa. So there's big movement in this race. And, uh, you know, Mars specific example, his specific point. Hey, this is the thing that's kind of going to doom Trump. He's saying the eat the cats thing. And I, I understand that perspective because... Look, it's just a fact. That lie came from a neo-Nazi group called Blood Tribe. And the right has been falling all over themselves, desperately trying to find a way to back that point up and failing miserably every time. They're citing videos that have nothing to do with Haitians, nothing to do with Springfield, Ohio. Uh, one was just a dude clearing geese after they got hit by a car. They're pretending this is a Haitian immigrant in Springfield who's going to eat the geese. Somebody... Chris Rufo offered $5,000 to prove that Haitian migrants are eating geese. And somebody sent in, a, sent in a video, probably collected the money, and it's a video of somebody, like, cooking a fucking duck on a grill. 
I mean, look, it's just their lies. And now there's bomb threats at schools and hospitals in Springfield because of the Nazi propaganda being spread by Donald Trump and J.D. Vance. And Bill Maher looks at all this and he goes, you know what? It's a bridge too far. So a couple of quick things about this. So Bill Maher, no matter what you think about Bill Maher, I I believe, you know, I could totally be wrong. I don't know any of these people personally, but I think Bill Maher says what he actually believes, which makes him unique among our media figures today. In terms of this, the stuff about the, the Haitian migrants being a bridge too far, what's insane about Trump is that he has said a million things. He says something almost every day that would have ended anybody else's political career, national political career anyway, for for president. I mean, imagine any other person running for president of the United States talking about somebody like John McCain and saying, I like people who don't get captured. I mean, that would have been the end of anybody else. But that's just a Tuesday for Donald Trump. And the predictions of him him being over started in 2015. You know, I can remember people before the 2016 election saying the Republican Party, they don't want Trump to to get the nomination, so they're going to pay him off. Or he's going to say that a family member is sick or something like that and drop drop out. And they just kept saying these things and it never happened. So you can't count Trump out ever. I, I still think this is going to be a pretty close election. Now, with Kyle Kalinske here sharing the poll numbers, the poll numbers do look pretty good. And one of the more wild things that I've seen recently is, I think it was CNN, but but others have been doing the same thing, mainstream media outlets, putting up polls that show Kamala Harris up by five, and then they're saying that's it within the margin of error. When has five points ever been within the margin of error? I've never heard, you know, I wouldn't pretend to be an expert on polling, but I've never heard a number like that being within the margin. The scary thing about it is now you could say Kamala Harris has not been in the race very long, and that and that would be fair. You know, she's she's done pretty tremendous numbers since Joe Biden dropping out. Like with Kyle Kalinske here saying that Trump was up 18 in Iowa and Kamala Harris has, has cut it to four. That's pretty, you know, I mean, that's remarkable. But, you know, when you have the nominee for one of the two major parties throwing out insane conspiracy theories like migrants are eating people's pets in a debate and the, and then he just doesn't have to drop out for being insane it just doesn't make any sense and i mean that shows what you know we have 30 40 percent of our country that are just gone they're never going to be able to be brought back into reality or any semblance of sanity. So that's the amazing thing about this to me is Kamala Harris has improved the chances of the Democrat winning greatly over Joe Biden. But how is this race just not a total runaway with Kamala Harris up by 10 or 15 points? It it just points to the insanity of so many of our fellow citizens that Donald Trump still has a chance of winning this election. And look, what are his biggest weaknesses? He's viewed as an extremist. Uh, uh, And on the issue of abortion, Americans despise him. And on the issue of election denialism, Americans despise him. He's fed into all three of those things within the past week. All three of them. He's been doing more election denialism. People hate that. This is why Republicans massively underperformed in 2022 in the special elections. He's reminding everybody he overturned Roe v. Wade, failing on abortion again. And the extremism thing, the weird thing... You're just putting that front and center when you're out there yelling about migrants eating cats. By the way, he says he wants to deport them. Okay, but they're legal immigrants. They're legal. What happened? I thought it was just illegal immigrants you were against. They're falling apart, bro. He's listening to idiots like Laura Loomer. You're not going to win a national election listening to idiots like Laura Loomer. So look, I understand why Bill Maher is pounding the gavel. I understand it, but I'm not quite there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm not there yet. I'm right now I'm I'm sitting she's got a 62% chance of victory. I'd made that number up, but that's how I feel. 62% chance of victory. That's where I think we are right now. Um there's still plenty of time between now and election day, and as I told you guys a thousand times, I'm very worried that in October the surprise will be Netanyahu will invade Lebanon or he'll invade Iran or he'll launch massive airstrikes against them 
And then Biden has already said, look, we're on your side, Israel. We'll hop in and fight the war with you. Well, they don't want you to fight it with them. They want you to fight it for them. And if he purposely attacks and drags the U.S. in, and I shouldn't say drags because Biden has agency. He could say, I don't want to fucking do it. You're on your own, right? But he's not. He's not going to do it. That APAC money really helps, you know, chart the direction of our policy, doesn't it? And then if you have a giant war in Iran right before the election, I think Netanyahu is going to calculate this is going to hurt Biden and Kamala. They're going to be blamed for it. And Trump will win. And he wants Trump to win. He's not exactly hidden that fact. So I still think you can still have something like that change the course of the race. You could have an economic collapse, control control or change the course of the race. But as of right now, I'm certainly not at the 50-50 point, but I'm also not at the pound the gavel point. But I will say if the trajectory continues as it is, then not only will Kamala win, she'll win very comfortably. If this trajectory stays the same, if he doesn't make big changes, if he doesn't stop doing what he's doing, not only will she win, she will win very, very comfortably. So what's kind of scary here is this this video that I'm uh, reacting to by Kyle Kalinske was recorded a couple of weeks ago. So this is before everything that's gone down with Lebanon and Iran. And Kyle Kalinske is spot on with what he's saying. You take that out of it. I think he's right. It's a 60-40 kind of election. I don't really think it's 50. You know, I don't know anything beyond what I just see and hear and read. I don't think it's a 50-50 election. I, I think Kamala Harris has the advantage, but we're seeing the October surprise by Netanyahu that Kyle Kalinske is talking about here. And, you know, Americans, Americans on both sides, they don't want more of this nonsense. They don't want more war. Now, experts, political experts will say that Americans don't really care in terms of it affecting a presidential election unless there are actual American boots on the ground, which it, I'd be kind of surprised if we'd see something like that. Very surprised if we'd see something like that before November. But this is now, you know, a couple of decades, more than a couple of decades, but a couple of decades of trillions of dollars that the United States has spent and lives wasted in the Middle East. And I just think the vast majority of the country is tired of this. Now, will Donald Trump do any better? No, he's going to be, you know, all in just like Joe Biden has been. But when you have the party in power so unwilling to go against Netanyahu, you're going to have people that, that are going to look and say, well, let's see what Trump could do. And that's the scariest thing. And I was listening to Ryan Grimm on the Majority Report with Sam Cedar yesterday, and he was saying, you know, this was this was planned for this to happen in October. And what happens if right before the election, we have gas prices that are four and five dollars when people are already you know, upset about the price of everything, that's not going to be beneficial for Kamala Harris. I don't see it happening, but it would be really nice if she would come out and and say, hey, when I'm president, we're going to do things differently. We're, there's not going to be a blank check. That won't happen, but that would, I think she'd win the election if she did that. If she just said, you know, Americans are tired of all this money that the United States is is spending on war. Uh, it's, it's time for these other countries to take care of themselves. I, I think she would win in a landslide if she did that, but I don't see Kamala Harris doing that. So Kyle Kalinske, I think he's right. This being a 60-40 kind of a deal with Kamala Harris winning pretty comfortably, but this new stuff in the Middle East really complicates things, and it's it's worrisome to me. But what do you guys think? Do you do you think Bill Maher's right about the election? Is it time to pound the gavel? Do you think Kyle Kalinske is right with 62%? You know, this number that he just kind of made up, 62% chance of Kamala Harris winning? Are you optimistic that Kamala Harris will win? Or do you think that Trump is somehow going to get back in there? And uh, I don't think anybody wants to think about that other than Trumpers and MAGA. Make sure to leave me a comment. I love reading your comments about Kyle Kalinske, Bill Maher, whatever you feel like com commenting on. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe. I'm closing in on 25,000 subscribers. I want to keep growing. And the growth, the quick growth that I've seen on Chris on Culture is all because of your likes, subscribes, and can't and comments. So if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do so. This will allow me to keep bringing out more content like this. This is Chris on Culture. I will see you in the next video.